This company secretly rules the world. There are some incredibly powerful businesses out there and you've probably heard of some of them. There's a chance that you haven't heard of this company, despite having heard of others like ABC, Apple and Gucci Industries. BlackRock. This company was established in 1988 and in less than 30 years it has developed into a household name known as the one that, in essence, controls the world. What exactly is BlackRock? And how did a risk management firm become the world's largest asset? holder. BlackRock manages asset with a market value around 10 trillion dollars. Controlling the money for millions of potential ordinary people, New York City is home to the multinational American investment management company BlackRock. Risk management and institutional fixed income asset management were its initial specialties. What's the story behind? It eventually grew to a point where it operates internationally with 70 offices spread across 30 nations and clients in 100 nations. Larry Fink, who later became the company's chairman and CEO, along with a few other individuals, including Robert Escobedo, Susan Wagner, Barbara Novick, Ben Golub, Hugh Frater, and Robert Ralph Scholstein founded BlackRock in 1988. By the time this business became profitable within a few months and the group asset had increased by fourfold to $2.7 billion the following year, they must have struck some sort of deal with the devil. BlackRock was the company's initial name, which it chose in 1992. In the same year, the company was in charge of $17 billion worth of asset, which grew into $53 billion by 1994. To put it mildly, BlackRock's rise was meteoric. BlackRock would expand over the years through a combination of organic growth and numerous acquisitions. By 2004, BlackRock would have an insane $325 billion in asset under management as a result of acquisitions. At the time, it wasn't nearly as absurd as it is now, but it was already significant enough for the US government to hire BlackRock to help deal with the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis. BlackRock would top the list of global asset managers by 2009. The world's biggest bank is smaller than BlackRock. It has been said that the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China has been stalking Wall Street for some time. Although most people still find it mysterious, that hasn't stopped it from drawing a healthy amount of criticism. After all, it's impossible to become as big as BlackRock without irritating quite a few people. They have drawn criticism for the effect of their holdings on the environment. Almost all large oil companies count BlackRock among their top three shareholders. And seven of the top 10 coal producers also includes BlackRock in their top 10 list. This would be pretty damning criticism, but BlackRock tries to counter them by investing heavily in sustainable and environmental protection. Yes, even justified criticism can stop this behemoth from growing. And when I use the word behemoth, I really mean it. While managing several trillion dollars in asset or 10% of all financial assets globally, BlackRock's scope extends far beyond just purchasing and holding stocks and bonds. Large investors like state pension funds, insurance companies and central banks' financial ministries receive advices from BlackRock. They also use their enormous wealth to fund and invest in businesses all over the world. In the financial market, BlackRock is essentially always involved in some way. In addition to holding sizable stakes in major US banks, BlackRock also holds sizable shares of businesses across virtually every continent from their Midtown Manhattan headquarters. BlackRock is involved in all aspects of mining, whether it be gold in Africa or the production of automobiles in Germany. So how do they actually do it all? The financial industry is constantly evolving, so strategies that might have worked for a few years years ago almost certainly won't work today. BlackRock has a keen understanding of this. In order to deal with this shifting tide, they went ahead and created Aladdin, an incredibly powerful software platform. Risk analysis for BlackRock's client is Aladdin's responsibility. In order to perform the high-stake risk analysis that people pay BlackRock exorbitant sums of money for, it receives sensitive data from significant institutions like banks and insurance companies. 5,000 computers make the Aladdin network, whose job is to track millions of trades and eventually evaluate the portfolios of its client around the clock, examining every potential
potential scenario and identifying potential problem with terrifying precision, providing extremely precise level of risk analysis. I believe you've never heard of this software, which is so commonplace that it has essentially evolved into the brain of some of the biggest investment firms out there. For BlackRock, Aladdin offers much more than just risk analysis. Using this software, they can access private information from globally recognized institutions like banks, pension funds, and insurance firms. Basically, giving them access to such wealth and information will give them insight into the management of assets worth about 20 trillion on top of the enormous 10 trillion in assets that BlackRock already manages. BlackRock has positioned itself in a comfortable position in the global economy. It holds shares and voting rights in many of the largest European companies in industries like oil and gas, transportation and food, which, believe me, are essential to society's continued functioning. The influence of BlackRock on society is much more pervasive than you might imagine. It holds bonds representing public debt pension funds for a sizable number of people and political power. When the organization that oversees the entire financial system of a nation has you on speed dial and you regularly serve as an advisor to governments as a wall, when the organization that oversees the entire financial system of a nation has you on speed dial and you regularly serve as an advisor to governments as a whole, you are in a league of your own. Central banks regularly ask BlackRock to audit regular banks and offer management advices. Ironically, because BlackRock is so large and frequently a major shareholder in the same banks, the central bank want them to audit and advise them. This means that BlackRock is literally sitting on both sides of the table during these meetings, advising the government on managing the banks they already own, and even if that weren't the case, it still gives them access to more privileged and highly sensitive information that will help them become even richer. If you want to know who to thank or blame for the creation of BlackRock, it would be billionaire Larry Fink. So who was the main man responsible and how wealthy must he be now? Fink has always been known as the person who always desired more than he could ever have. Ironically, he would only become the founder of such a powerful wealthy company after his employers suffered a devastating $100 million loss. At the age of 23, Fink began working on Wall Street, where he structured and traded bonds. He quickly rose through the ranks and within a decade had somewhat of a reputation, aiding in the creation of the debt securization market, which transformed the way loans were managed on Wall Street, for better or for worse. The ironic turns in Larry Fink's action to fame are endless. He not only invented one of the key instruments that caused the economy meltdown, he was also the same person that US Treasury hired to fix it. By the age of 31, he had earned a reputation as a true investment genius and was the youngest managing director in Boston history, helping to effectively increase their bottom line by adding assets worth 1 billion. Larry was a golden goose until he wasn't anymore. Larry would end up losing 100 million for his company and would transform into a toxic asset overnight. He was shunned and rejected from the company where he had worked for 12 years and earned an absurd sum of money. Even though there were setbacks along the way, he would eventually help found BlackRock and grow it into the titan it is today. Larry Fink has undoubtedly recovered as evidenced by his estimated net worth of 1 billion. Thus, we haven't even begun to discuss how extraordinarily powerful BlackRock is. Despite its control over asset valued at several trillion dollars and its involvement in the financial policy making of the United States government, BlackRock owns a sizable portion of Apple stocks, giving them access to the company's sizable market share in smartphones and tablets. This gives them a greater level of involvement in a few extremely popular companies and projects. They also own stock in Microsoft, another major player in the technology sector, demonstrating to everyone that if you have enough money, you don't need to invent a single microchip to dominate the sector. Because they are expert at directing their investment, BlackRock also owns a sizable stake in pharmaceutical firms like Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson. Just as I mentioned earlier, some of the BlackRock's largest holdings 
banks are in significant oil companies like ExxonMobil and Chevron. I mean, imagine not investing in things human needs to survive. In addition to increasing its present in sustainable investing and environmental, social and corporate governance, BlackRock has invested in a number of significant projects. In essence, they have spent a sizable sum of money in an effort to be environmentally friendly and to look great doing it. BlackRock has used its considerable influence to bring environmental and diversity issues to the public's attention, sending letters to CEOs and funding initiatives like the Carbon Disclosure Project are two incredibly beneficial and unquestionable significant ways. Private companies must publicly disclose their climate impact, the diversity of their board of directors and other metrics according to rules proposed by BlackRock to the US government, which also financially supporting businesses that aren't doing any of these things, meaning that BlackRock sits on both sides of the table once again. But hey, they can't really help it. They are just so powerful. So did you know about the company that secretly rules the world? Do you think there are any company out there that rivals BlackRock? If you like this video, click on the next one on the screen. It's very insightful. See you there.